Good morning, folks. New moon partially eclipsing the SDO satellite this morning. We've got 10 science stories to hit today, a short look ahead on the sun and in the atmosphere, space records broken and observer science verified. Let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com. Apart from the moon crossing the visible range on the north at the end of the sequence, the main features of note are the coronal holes, likely to enhance solar wind this weekend and into next week. Right now, the solar wind is coming down from the last coronal hole stream enhancement, and geomagnetism is following suit. Spain can't catch a break. On the heels of record snow, the temperature is plummeting past previous records there. You may have heard about a cold wave coming to the eastern U.S. It is due to a jet stream dip forming right now. This is the Friday forecast, and it is going to get chilly. Let's jump out to space where a video on the Nancy Grace Telescope is offering a view into how the Hubble Ultra Deep Field is now something possible on a much more massive scale. Imagine 100 deep field images all at once. The Roman field of view. Of course, scientists find interesting stuff much closer nearby all the time, like this 10 billion year old rocky world in our galaxy, which also shakes up their concept of when Earth-like planets could have first appeared on the scene which now potentially gets pushed back to the beginning of all planet formation. This cosmic neon eye candy is an X-ray view of a star, brighter than should be possible, and so they conclude it must be a rare type of merged star with double the brightness. There aren't exactly any observations to back up this hypothesis, just it's too bright, must be a star that survived a merger. This is only slightly more academically egregious than the science and artist renderings of what they think is happening based on blips on a screen. Massive outflow of galactic gas, they say, sucking the star-forming reservoir dry. I admit, this is better than the spikes on a line graph they interpret as complex astrophysical interaction, but they still took a heck of a little and ran round the world with it. It would be easier to get behind some of these guesses from the science world if they weren't constructed on a shattering foundation. One of the places where a little mistake in plasma and dust goes a long way in the models is the intergalactic medium. I promised you guys the fast radio bursts would be cosmologically useful, demonstrating here another conflict resolvable only with new theories. Of course, the big astronomy story yesterday continues one of the greatest conflicts between theory and reality, the cosmic timeline. You can't have supermassive quasars this big, this early in the universe, and expect anyone to believe the Big Bang timeline. Here, they suggest that perhaps all their ideas about quasar formation were wrong, and they boldly suggest now they know exactly what the new mechanism is. They do not. That guess is based on more theory, no observations. But either way, already an issue for cosmology, we've now got the most distant and earliest supermassive quasar, and it challenges the mainstream once again. Speaking of challenging, a galactic nucleus that flashes in flaring activity on the most regular schedule known has been guessed by the experts now too. They noticed the first flash a few years ago, and because they had never seen anything in that galaxy like this before, figured that a star had gone nova. Now, it is a repeater, better located to the core of the galaxy. They have forgotten that it never happened before a few years ago and decided that a star has been doing this for billions of years, swinging in close, causing a flare over and over again. It somehow didn't do this until just a few years ago, but hey, it is only their second guess on this galaxy, so we'll have to give them a break. By the way, I am often asked why I'm so harsh on these dark matter models of cosmology and all of their offshoots. When most have moved on in their papers, and even nature called the last gasp coming for wimps. Why can't I just let it die in time and peace? Because their punishment must be more severe. After billions of taxpayer dollars, the facts staring them in the face for years, ostracizing anyone who would dare question them, like the observers, when the world fully understands the depth of their failure, then dark matter has my permission to die. And to those dozens in the field angrily checking in here as happens daily, you thought darkness was your ally, but you merely adopted the dark. Light was born in it, molded by it. The heavens saw nary the light until together the plasma could stand and it's clear that it's still nothing to you but blinding. Those shadows betrayed you because they belong to the light. Now, space weather. What most know from observations is that the auroras, the geomagnetically induced current, and the geoelectric effects of solar wind enhancement are stronger in the north in general. Sure, there are localized exceptions, especially near the South Atlantic Anomaly, the South Magnetic Pole, and geoconductively vulnerable New Zealand. But indeed, it has now been measured out in space that in general, it is confirmed the south-to-north field direction indeed funnels more plasma to the north. 
Last but not least, another baby step in the crescendo of catastrophe. Amidst all the answered questions on tiny recurrent Nova, one everlasting one has been where are they all? The better the technology, the more we know we've missed, and the smaller we realize they can be. Classic Nova, Dwarf Nova, Recurrent Nova, Type 1 X-ray Burst, Transient Brightenings, Mass Loss Events, Super Flares. These things occur on the thousands of times per year scale, not century. Luckily for life, most stars have a long time between their tiny events. For our sun, that's about 12,000 years, the exact next harmonic for the known and confirmed 1,000, 3,000, and 6,000 year super flare cycles, which also match the cycles of Heinrich events and geomagnetic excursions. Earth due now, magnetic excursion already well underway, waiting on the sun. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more at our channel page, the playlist, or at suspiciousobservers.org. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.